Hi guys, Ben here, back in the chair for another preview. It's another Premier League game at Anfield. We've just beaten West Ham by four goals to one, and we face a similar calibre of opponent, I guess, this weekend in Newcastle United at half five on BT Sport. And for once, <laughs> I've almost got very little to say. I, I almost um, just want to let the boys get on with it. We're in such good form following that little hiccup in January when we lost to Swansea in West Brom. Um, the, the fear at the time was that we'd do a similar thing to last season. We'd completely fold and have a complete write-off of... Uh, January and February, but we've turned it around. Um, we're doing well in Europe, obviously. Uh, we've bounced back in the league and we're comfortably in the top four now. We're, we've pulled away a bit from Chelsea, who lost to United uh, last weekend and got City this weekend. Um, Arsenal losing ground too. So, uh, in terms of United beating Chelsea, that obviously was a positive result uh, for the top four. Not so positive in the race for second, but I think it really is just all about getting in the top four and the rest will sort itself out. But Liverpool face Newcastle United who, I mean, we've got no reason to fear them. I've obviously got great respect for them as a club and their fans and their manager more importantly. Um, but I just don't see how they can pose a threat. They've got a couple of injuries. I know John Joe Shelby picked up a knock so he's a doubt. And I'm, I'm, I've just got no, no reason to be concerned. I, I know it's I don't want to come across as complacent or arrogant because Liverpool, more than anyone else, know how to mess up when they're in a good run and they're facing someone that they should beat with relative ease. We have struggled in those sort of games before um, and that obviously is something we are prone to here and something that is possible, especially if we make the mistake that I'm probably making and looking past this game, looking towards Porto, looking towards Man United, uh, particularly Man United because Porto is, is, is done really as far as the tie is concerned. Um, but we've got no injuries, we've got nothing really that should be holding us back with scoring goals for fun, looks like we've already clicked. Um, as we look towards the run-in for this season and um, one thing we cannot afford to do is take our eye off the top four race it is still something that's very important and the gap between us and Chelsea is only four points we do have to go to Stamford Bridge so let's not uh, let's not think it's done and dusted just yet even though we are massive massive odds on to finish in the top four um, but look we've got, to get, we've got to take care of business so Starting 11 prediction, uh, Karius, who is getting rave reviews at the moment. His save uh, from Arnautovic on Saturday was sensational. Um, his form is, has obviously picked up and that he's not conceding stupid goals. Uh, I'm not going to get carried away. I still would like us to sign a new keeper. I'm not going to get carried away because he's not done anything uh, that he shouldn't, apart from that maybe one save against Arnautovic. But you, you expect keepers once every few games to make an outstanding save. Um, but look, happy for him to keep going uh, as it is. Uh, right back, Trent's playing really well. I see no reason to change that. Um, and looks like we've settled on Matip and Van Dijk for the time being at centre back. So again, I'm happy to let that go, even though I've got a bit of an agenda against Matip. Not not literally, but um, I've, I've always kind of preferred Lovren. Uh, Roberts at left back, absolute revelation. He, we shouldn't even be thinking about dropping him or replacing him. He, at the moment, looks like a left back we've been waiting for for a long time. Midfield. Henderson missed out um, against West Ham. Um, you know, if, if you're writing down your best 11, it's kind of debatable, I guess, whether he makes it. And I, I've got no idea whether he makes clocks. Um, Emre Chan, you know, the other number six there, um, I guess we'll have a. He, he might have just kind of written his team down for all three games, or he might have written his team down for. Um, for Newcastle or Man United, and whatever he can put together against Porto, he'll put together. Um, you know, I, th I think maybe we'll go with Henderson here um, and then maybe give him a rest in midweek and then probably play him again against United. You probably want to play your club captain against Man United away from home, uh, but I suspect Chad will play there as well. Uh, but to, for, for this one, I think maybe Oxlade Chamberlain deserves a start as well with Henderson and why not James Milner? He's been great too. So let's go for those three. Um, maybe Lallana will get a run out in midweek, I don't know, and Van Aldem too. Uh, and then obviously the front three. Will he rest one of them, maybe? <sighs> Doesn't feel like the game to do that. I think you you got to play all three of Mane, Salah, and Firmino here. Then maybe in midweek you rest two of them. You, you might want to rest one here with, with an eye on United, but you know I, I I don't see any reason why you'd want to stop momentum. I've got nothing against um, resting all three in midweek. To be honest, you know maybe give uh, Solanke, Ings, and uh, you know Woodburn or, or whoever else you want to give a run. We're not we're not going to lose six 0 So um, uh, for me. Tuesday or, or, or is it Wednesday? It's Tuesday. Yeah. It's, it's just uh, it, it is what it is. It's um, you can play whoever you want as far as I'm concerned, uh, without disrespecting them too much. Um, and obviously, I predict we're going to win. Uh, I think it'll be a similar sort of game to to West Ham. I think Newcastle obviously have got some talented players. They are going to pose a threat. They obviously uh, picked up a point against us uh, in the uh, game at St James's Park earlier this season, which I was at, and it was one of the most frustrating games. It's probably the most. 
uh, irritating game of the season in some ways. Um, similar to Burnley at home, it was all in that sort of September, October period where you really didn't know which way our season was going to go. And I, I remember writing off the season at one point, um, and I don't blame myself for doing so. We'd just been beaten four-one by Spurs, and you know, it, just before that, we'd drawn in this Newcastle game and against Burnley, and uh, knocked out the league cut by Leicester in a, in a fairly damning fashion and we looked like we had no strength and depth but since that Spurs game minus the blip against Swansea and West Brom we've been pretty much perfect so um, I'm going for another 4-1 win here and probably the same sort of goal scorers I think the front three will all sort of chip in with goals and assists which is great I think that that front three are all in magnificent form including Sadio Mane who has obviously been a, an area of concern at times but he seems to be in the goals again which is great even if he's missing one or two chances every week at least he's kind of putting some away and enjoying himself which is the main thing he's got Robertson out wide you know kind of overlapping and providing the outlet which is which is perfect I think he's been absolutely sensational and one of the best under the radar buyers of the summer in the Premier League um, and the Reds have just got to go and do the business it's as simple as that um, the conditions, I don't know what they're going to be like. Obviously, it's been snowing here in the in the UK, most of the country, especially down south where I am at the moment. Um, and yeah, hopefully there's no real implications there and everything goes ahead as, as planned and the pitch is in good condition and the fans are able to have a good time and the Reds are able to do the business. And look, you know, City play Chelsea, as I said, so yeah, if Chelsea can drop more points there, that's perfect. And then we've only really... That, that, that might really kind of cement your top four for the time being with Arsenal falling away they play City in 25 minutes as I record this I don't expect them to get an awful lot there so that should get rid of them and then yeah if Chelsea lose at, at City um, that could be a seven point gap by the time uh, next week comes around between us and Chelsea so so magnificent. I think I've got that right I might have completely made that up but I, thought, you know, I feel like it's a big gap between us and Chelsea now so, leave your comments uh, with your predictions and your uh, starting lineups and any comments you may have. I don't have a go of being too complacent, but I, I'm just in a, in a good way at the moment with the Reds, and it's uh, a good place to be. Uh, the, the big one's obviously going to be United away next week. That's, I can't help but look ahead to that. I mean, it's um, that that is a statement game. I, I shouldn't be looking past these two that we've got before that at Anfield, but you know, part of me, and I think the players will subconsciously, without even the, no matter how much Klopp tells them not to, and he will tell them not to, and he'll just be thinking about Newcastle, but United always looming, and it's the biggest game of the season as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and please do follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, as Ben might say, and all of those, and I will see you after the game up the Reds.